Hi, my name is Ian Swan. Today I want to talk to you about how we connect one of our developer kits to the cloud using AWS IoT web services. We created an app for that. Let me show you how it works. Why create an app? Well, setup and provisioning can be quite complex. No companies do this well. Our own manual process is 28 pages long. Our competitors is, are even longer. So we want to create a good out-of-the-box experience and be a real solution provider. Let's take a look at a diagram of how everything fits together. In the cloud are a couple of REST APIs, one to store data and the other to handle the communications. I chose Node.js, the state-of-the-art JavaScript framework, as it is very scalable, really fast, and runs on every cloud platform. I chose to separate the APIs so we could easily create a Google or an IBM Watson API in place of the AWS IoT API shown here. A quick look at the communication API. It uses the AWS IoT SDK. You need an account on AWS. The unique key goes in here. The end customer would not see this, of course. The creator of the IoT thing would have an AWS account to handle many thousands or millions of customers. The storage API for this application stores the sensor values, stores them in JSON format, and any other application has access to the data using the REST interface. The phone app is written in React Native, another JavaScript framework. This allows us to create generic code that will run natively on the Android and the iOS Apple phones. Really cool. The code base is common, fantastic for maintainability. The first part of the app grabs the certificates from AWS IoT. The second part of the app talks to the board. You can see at this point the board is connected to both the access point, i.e. the router, and the phone. This is again span patent. After everything is complete, the board no longer needs to talk to the app. OK, let's see the app in action. I have the board here powered up. It's powered up through, U through the USB, but we do have batteries on the back for standalone. Um, I have the app installed on my Android phone. Let me just start it. Okay, so we want to, this board is not connected at all to anything. So I want to add a new thing. It's like an out of the box. Okay. I'm going to set it up for AWS. This is the GS2200 Star Kit board. Okay, at this point, the app has gone to AWS and pulled down the certificates that are required to connect the board to AWS, but there's still no connection between the board and the app. Okay, when I click this, we will initiate because it's an Android phone, it will initiate a connection to the, uh, to the board. And the board will inform the app of all the access points, all the, all the networks that the board can see. And it's up to me to choose one. You can see there's a lot uh, because we're a Wi-Fi development house. Let me just choose one that... Um, Straightforward. Okay, so at this particular point, the board is connected to the access point. Actually, it's not connected to the access point. It will be when I click this. 
Um, let's click it. This particular point, the board is connected now to the access point, or connecting to the access point, and it's also connected to the phone. So the board is actually connected to two Wi-Fi networks simultaneously. This is a, a patent that we have in Genspan, and it's really, really good if any of the connections are dropped due uh, through the provisioning process. You can always pick up from where you left off. So it takes a few seconds to do the configuration. Everything is going to actually be set up. All the certificates are going to be put onto the board. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in the background. You can see now um, we're provisioned. So we're now connected. There were, there's no connection now between the board and the app. The board is talking directly to the network that I chose. So. Let me have a look at the dashboard. We have a dashboard here. So this dashboard is looking at the cloud. So in this particular configuration, the board is actually putting sensor values up to the cloud, and the app is reading those, those values from the cloud. And again, there's no direct connection between the board and the app. Okay, we have a, a bunch of connections, to, uh, a bunch of bunch of sensors. This is the latest values appear on the um, the the dashboard. We have a battery sensor. We have an an LED we can switch off and on. We have a light sensor. We have a Wi-Fi signal strength, and we have a, a temperature sensor. So, um, and the latest values are. are shown here. Let me have a, a quick look at the light sensor. Um, it will give a, a graphical display of the last 100 values that it pulls in, if it has 100. And let me just go to the end here. And what I'll actually do is I will flash, using my iPhone, I will flash some light onto the light sensor and switch it off again. And we do. There's the pulse. So we're seeing this all in relatively real time. Let's go back to switch the LED off and on. OK, I'm going to switch the LED. There's an LED here that's going to switch the other one on. You can see the LED has actually gone on. I'm going to switch it off again. It's gone off. And again, this is all going through the cloud. There's no direct connection. So I can go on further, but I won't. Uh, this has just been a quick demo to show you the capabilities of the app um, and to show how very easy it is to actually provision and to create a reasonable out-of-box experience for the user. Thanks for watching.